buddy. It's like deja vu. So good to see you, Joster. So good to see you. Let's rub that chest. Hi. It's going to be a weird day for us today, Jaw. I have a, uh, I, well, I have plans later. Let's just say that. I have some plans later, and I'm going to do the vlog while I'm out, out doing that. But that's not till 3 o'clock, so. But this is one of the better vlogs I'm ever going to get to do. I found a lot of stories about this place, and I've sequenced it in my mind, and I think it'll be a really entertaining vlog. Well, good morning, gang. I thought I would tell you today kind of sometimes how a vlog is born. And today's vlog is a really good example, a really good uh, story as to how that happened. Um, last night, a friend of mine is going to uh, see Fleetwood Mac in concert, and we were talking about, there's Jaw. We were talking about how great they are live, and uh, the uh, the crux of this conversation is that she had seen them three times. I've seen them once, and uh, it got me thinking. I'm like, I'd love to do another Fleetwood Mac vlog if I can find anything. So I knew Stevie Nicks had made a documentary about. Is that Pollyanna? I think that's Pollyanna. Um, She'd making a documentary about the making of one of her albums a couple years ago, and the house is not too far from me. So I was starting to do some research and I was going to do that house. And then as I started watching interviews and started reading different articles about history and about their history, I decided I wanted to do Village Recorders where they recorded the album Tusk. Because this place used to be a Masonic temple that had a history beyond the Masonic temple and beyond it being Village Recorders. There was something right in the middle of there that was also worth telling you. So I'm going to go there, tell you the whole story of basically Stevie Nicks life at that time, Fleetwood Mac, a couple of other bands. We're going to see a really spectacular looking building in Westwood. Days of Jordan the Lion begins now. You can move them, dude. I'd be, I love how he just got rid of the F. Like, did he even sign Bob Moose? It's a puppy party. <laughs> oh my gosh. Puppies! Sniff, sniff, sniff. Ciao, relax. She gets <laughs> All right, we're out of here. Oh man, it's a hot one. I had to pop in here and get something to drink. Well, Lionhearts, we are here. This building right behind me is actually our destination for today. And if you like hearing me talk, you're going to love today. Boy, do I have a lot of stories about this place. Now, in the 1920s, this building was actually built to originally be a Masonic Hall. Hence the design layout of the building and they've even kept the motif of having that American flag on top. But in the 40s and 50s, they changed it over. The building was actually sold to Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and that was actually the teacher of transcendental meditation that the Beatles went to in the 60s. And so this was actually where the Beatles studied transcendental meditation, if you can believe it. It's on the first floor auditorium that is still there. And yet, the Beatles as a collective never got to record here. Ringo Starr since has recorded here. But in 1968, the building was actually sold to a composer, a man named George Hormel, who had actually made his living and made his name in uh, creating the theme songs and the orchestrations to some of the most popular TV shows of the day. And when George Hormel took over this building, it became Village Recorders. Also affectionately known as The Village. Now the village has seen some of the most impressive musicians of all time record here. Uh, we could start with the Beach Boys, Bob Dylan, Aerosmith, the Almond Brothers Band, the Smashing Pumpkins, Weezer. My favorite Frank Zappa albums were recorded here, the Joe's Garage albums. Steely Dance Asia. The Rolling Stones Goat's Head Soup. But 
what really brought me to find out about this place and the reason that I really, really wanted to come by and vlog this today was because I'm a big Fleetwood Mac fan. And there's a pretty fascinating story about Fleetwood Mac here. See, this has been a Masonic temple, and like I said, it's been a center for transcendental meditation. And once they turned it into a studio, they had to make a name. So they started creating handmade consoles so that you couldn't cre recreate their sound. And at one point, Sly from Sly and the Family Stone wanted to record here, but he wanted two entrances to the studio. So to accommodate him, the people that ran the studio in those days actually put in another doorway and an external wall in one of the studios. Now, they had made a name for themselves by doing things like that, being willing to accommodate the artists. And so what they did was they ended up building a whole new studio, what's called Studio D now. And that studio was built specifically for Fleetwood Mac in 1979 to record their album Tusk. And the story to Tusk, I actually almost have to take you back to Sausalito and when they were recording Rumors. Now Stevie Nicks would basically tell this story and how she said it all basically all started was from cocaine. She said in 1976 she went from being just a casual cocaine user, sometimes being offered at parties and uh, just doing it on the occasional occurrence to being somebody that bought it. And she said, once you're somebody that buys it, you're somebody that does it every day. And what she said was that uh, she used to carry around a gram vial in her boot everywhere she went. And she said, from the time that I woke up, I'd do a blast to the time that I went to bed. It's all I could think about. And she said, I remember going into recording rumors in Sausalito and thinking to myself, how did I let it get to this point? She said, um, cocaine makes you do weird things and she said basically how it started for her was she said I I would do it because it would give me a little bit of a boost of energy and then she said I would feel almost like it was too much of a boost of energy so I would drink some brandy to take the edge off and then she said I would feel the effects of the brandy feeling like I was drunk and then I would do more cocaine and she said this just became basically a vicious cycle to where she was doing it all the time and uh, one night, the, the band had a party in Sausalito where they were working on rumors and her and Mick Fleetwood were the last ones at a party and they hooked up and it was the beginning of the end of her relationship with Lindsey Buckingham. Now she said that she knew it would have never happened if it weren't for her addiction to cocaine, but she said at the end of the recording sessions of Rumors, when they were leaving Sausalito, her and Lindsay had a big blow up fight, and she knew that that was the end. She said they had always had an agreement that they would never let any one person in the band's personal life affect the band as a whole. And so she said, I knew that the band would stay together, but I knew that there was no way that we could be. And it's hard to be in a band with somebody that you've wronged and have to look at them every day on stage and try and put up a smile. And she said, and that was also when she didn't ever think it was gonna work out with Mick. She knew it was a mistake from the beginning, but she went from Lindsay to a short time with Mick. And then when they left, Sausalito and were on their way back to Los Angeles, she moved in with Don Henley. And throughout that time, the year that was in between the time that they recorded Rumors and that they came here to record Tusk, she was with Don Henley and would write some of the songs that would end up on Tusk. Tusk was widely considered, at least by the standards of what they sold Rumors. Rumors had sold 10 million copies by the time they went in to sell it to record Tusk. And when Tusk came out, it only sold four million, so it was still a pretty successful album in my opinion, but in their eyes it was way, it was, it was definitely a letdown. And what she said is they spent 13 months, five days a week recording here. And to accommodate Stevie, they actually had built the recording room to look like Tahiti. She wanted a mural of Tahiti painted on the side of the uh, recording booth. And this is where they recorded the songs for Tusk, including the song Tusk, which if you ever wonder how Lindsey Buckingham was feeling after losing Stevie Nicks, that song pretty much tells 
in detail how he's feeling, but then you also have one of the most beautiful songs ever recorded, Sarah. And I'm not somebody who generally is a huge fan of female vocal styled bands, but Fleetwood Mac's always had one of those amazing allures to me. And that song in particular, because what that song is, is that song is partially a love song to her former self that she's seeing the poetic side and this free, free feeling side go away, but it was also kind of a love song to her, her child that she had lost. Um, she had become pregnant and lost the child. And so she said when they came here, they spent, like I said, 13 months, five days a week, and had racked up the largest bill in history for a band to make one album. When it was all said and done, they actually had uh, spent a million dollars, and that's not even including what she said they spent on cocaine. She said she was doing more cocaine in the time that they were recording here than she'd ever done. She said they all were, and she said it was causing everybody to act pretty crazy and to constantly have fights. and. She said, what we spent on two weeks of cocaine, I could have paid all of our rents for six months, but it just goes to show you how out of hand and how out of control it can finally get. And she did say that um, Lindsay would actually credit Fleetwood Mac being in Fleetwood Mac as the whole reason that their relationship didn't work out because his feeling was that they would have been successful no matter what they did, as long as they were together. And being in the band broke that apart. Um, Stevie said, you know, she said, Lindsay feels that if we would have never been in this band, we would have been successful in another way in music. We would have gotten married, we would have had a kid. But she said, I realized really early on that I didn't want to ever be married and I didn't want to have kids because I felt like that was throwing away being an artist. So I felt like the only way to truly be an artist was to be single and not have anything to tie you down. And uh, so that's how she's pretty much lived her life, her whole life, um, since then. And they would have had all those recording sessions here. If you go back and listen to the album, it's, it was an experimental album because, like I said, what they were going through as far as the time, plus it was 1979, new musics were hitting the scene and Lindsay was starting to become uh, pretty heavily influenced by like the new wave and post-punk sound. Stevie said later on that uh, in 1986 she went to a doctor and she had done so much cocaine that the doctor said she had a hole in her nose that was so high up that her very next blast of cocaine could literally very well be her very last blast of anything. And she said her message to everyone is if you want to do cocaine, save your money because it's going to cost you $50,000 in rehab to get off it. You'll either spend the money to get off it or you'll never get off it, in her opinion. And those are the original stained glass windows that were in the building when it was originally created. How fascinating is that? So guys, this is pretty awesome actually. I um, Before I left, I decided to knock on the door and just tell them what I do and what I had just filmed and see if they had any interest. And initially when I was even first starting to talk, he was kind of shaking his head no. And then the more I talked, the guy really seemed to be interested. And then I found out I was talking to the owner. So he wants me to send him some clips of some of my old videos and he might allow me to come in here at some point and uh, let me do a walkthrough and give me a tour because he was pretty amazed by some of the things that I knew. So keep your fingers crossed guys. The one last little thing I thought I'd leave you guys with is this is the studio that Eric Clapton recorded Tears in Heaven in, the song about the death of his son when his son was jumping out of bed in a hotel room and had fallen out the window. All right, well since I'm over here, I've wanted to try this place for a long time. I used to listen to uh, Coast to Coast with George Norrie every single night when I worked and uh, had the driving jobs. And he always used to talk about this place as being his uh, favorite hideaway. And uh, of course, it's Italian food. It was supposed to be some great Italian food. And I've always wanted to come here. So today, we are here. You know what's interesting is that Stevie Nicks said that she never blamed Fleetwood Mac for her and Lindsay's relationship not working out. She said that she always believed in fate and that fate got 
them in Fleetwood Mac and made everything in her life happen the way it was supposed to happen and uh, she would never change that for anything. And that's kind of a weird tie-in because if we end up getting into that studio and get to see all that stuff, it's like, <laughs> that was fate. Oh wow, check out the statues up here. This property, I just swung by Beverly Hills and saw a lot of these. And you can't have statues without a lion. Well, gang, as I was editing the vlog tonight, I was really happy that I started it the way I did and that I decided to tell you about how I was inspired to do today's vlog. What kind of was talked about, what provoked it. And then when I went there and just decided to go inside, I couldn't believe after I started talking for a while how receptive the owner was to what I was doing and how excited he was. And he was actually throwing out places wanting to know if I'd ever heard of him and I had already vlogged a handful of him and he was really, really amazed by that. He he actually said, you're like the young Huel Hauser. And um, because of all that, at the end, before I left, he said, I really like your energy. Send me a couple of your videos to check out and we'll find a morning one of these days that I can bring you in here and give you a walkthrough. And I said, man, I just that's so cool. I, I said I was inspired to come here because of the whole story of Fleetwood Mac recording Tusk here. And I just love the idea of, of Stevie recording the vocals for Sarah and what Sarah was about in that vocal booth with that's painted like Tahiti. And he goes, it's still painted like that. And what's the story behind Sarah? And I told him and he goes, wow, you do know your stuff. So that was fate. Thank you, Stevie Nicks for uh, talking about fate. And then perhaps this whole vlog was fate. Have a great night, Lionhearts. I hope you enjoyed this. Good night. <laughs>